And a good Tuesday morning to you all. Sorry for being a little bit late. It happens sometimes. Uh, technical difficulties beyond some control. Not all, but just some. And uh, But we're up and we're running. And it's a Tuesday morning. It's all good in the neighborhood unless, unless you're a baseball player by the name of A-Rod or Nelson Cruz or a few others. And yeah, maybe it's not so much a good day. But nonetheless... We're up and we're running and we're having a good time and we do welcome you back, my friend, to the show that never ends, as the title says, and uh, we're having some fun. So let's get right to it. Let's talk a little, and let's uh, get on the sandbox, the uh, the soapbox, if you will, or the sandbox, uh, because the we know baseball players play in the dirt, right? And there is a lot of dirt that's going on right now in Major League Baseball, and the dirt is the biogenesis deal, the the performance enhancing drugs if you will and for those of you not aware maybe you've been sleeping under a rock because i know it's been on every newscast it's in every newspaper it's um for for all intent and purposes it's it's right in your face it's it's right there and what it is is they're they're discussing the fact that there are ball players heaven to betsy that have used performance enhancing drugs no different than that of Lance Armstrong and and we all know how that turned out for him in his tour de France defense and and things such as that so we all know how that's all working out but the facts are that ball players have been using a steroid of some sort over the many years and the purpose behind those steroids if you will in some cases have been to heal their muscles. That's what a steroid is basically for. It's there to heal. But if you're healthy, it bulks. It gives you strength. It gives you um, kind of a unfair advantage. And so baseball has finally decided to put the hammer down on these guys. In my opinion, there's a era, there is a point that you have to almost you almost have to look at this through through a different set of eyes. And and what do I mean by that? All right. Let's let's look at Barry Bonds. The home run king, he he defeated and and passed Hank Aaron. He defeated and passed Roger Maris, Mark McGuire, Sammy Sosa, not particularly in that order. Roger Clemens, Mark McGuire, I've already mentioned Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa, uh, Rafael Palmero. These are guys who have somehow, some way, already surpassed the watershed mark that we put in there that say you must have 500 home runs or more, uh, 3,000 hits or more. Uh, what's the other watershed mark? Oh, uh, 300 victories, and in some cases, Cy Young. So let's face it, Roger Clemens has all of that and much more. Barry Bonds has all that and much more. Mark McGuire has all that much more. Sammy Sosa has all that much more. So does Rafael Palmero, so on and so forth. None of these guys are going to get in the Hall of Fame. A-Rod just kind of sealed that to, to, to the fact that he's not going to get in the Hall of Fame now. He's appealing his sentence, which is 211 games. Hmm. 211 games. Because he's not going to be able to play through the year 2014, he's not eligible to come back to baseball until 2015, and by then he's 40 years old. I said this last week. If I'm A-Rod, I thumb my nose at Major League Baseball and say, okay, bud, I'm out of here. I retire. Here's my money. See you later. For our home team, the Texas Rangers, Nelson Cruz has been suspended for the remaining portion of the season. That's 50 games. So is everybody else that was involved. There's 12 other guys. Are the Rangers in trouble? 
Mm, I don't think so. And they won last night, by the way. They beat the, the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim at the Big A on the road. And so they're now, I think there are two games, a solid two games. Yeah, because Oakland was off last night, so they only picked up a half a game. So they're two games out of first place right now with about 50 games to go. Plenty of time. No panic. This could be a total reversal of last year where the Rangers were in first place for, <clears throat> I think, 174 days until the last day of the season when Oakland beats them on the last last day and wins the Western Division. Uh, the Rangers made the wild card. It was a one-game playoff against the Orioles, but they lost. But the, four, the, but, but the facts are these. Uh, the Rangers are in good shape. They're, they're, I don't think you're... I don't think this is panic mode yet. There was talk about bringing Manny Ramirez up to replace Nelson Cruz. Uh, no, I'm not into that one yet. There was discussion to bring in some other guys, but I think our farm system is well stocked. Um, so we'll see. In any case, the the whole uh, I'm a little. I'm a little concerned about pitching, but not so much hitting. Lance Berkman's thinking about coming back. Of course, there was also a discussion that Lance Berkman was going to be retired. Well, he's not there yet. So, we'll see. In the meanwhile, Rangers play again tonight against the Angels. They'll be in uh, in the Big A, so that's a late game for the Central Time Zone. For you though it out on the West Coast, it's a normal time. Starts at seven oh five your time, but nine oh five our time. It means that game, I mean I, I stayed up until about midnight, and you know then it was over, and that's that's late. That's not the reason why we were late getting on the air. It's just that it's late. <laughs> so this black eye on, on Major League Baseball, what is this going to do? Well, I know what it should do. It should clean up baseball. But in the long run, what do you think? What do you think this is going to do to the great game of baseball? I love baseball. I have always loved the game of baseball. Baseball for me is a time-honored tradition. It's probably the greatest. There, there's First of all, baseball has so many pluses, and I know about the minuses. Okay, let me talk the negative first because everybody likes to talk about the negative. It's too long. It takes too long to play the game. There's not enough action going on. I'm ADHD and I want to see things going on. Squirrel. <laughs> I mean, come on. Baseball is, and let me explain this to you, baseball still is the only game without a clock. You play until you win. That's what I love about the extra innings. Baseball also has where defense controls the ball. It's the only sport where the defense controls the ball. Defense is in the outfield. Pitcher's got the ball. You're on offense. you got to hit the ball. So, baseball is also about life. I think that's the other reason I love it so much. Because when you think about baseball and it's based solely on numbers, solely on stats. But let's face it, boys and girls, it's how you deal with those stats. It's how you deal with failure. I mean, if you're the best baseball player, we'll use okay, let's use Ted Williams, the last man to hit 400. That means that 60% of the time he failed. Now, last time I checked, if I took a test and 100 was the best score I can make, if I made a 40, I failed. Most of these guys do 30. And they're making millions and millions. I've always said there are two jobs in the world you could make millions of dollars at, fail miserably, and still make a lot of money. One is a weatherman in Texas. I've always said that. No no, no knock on the guys I know that work on meteorology in, in Dallas-Fort Worth or in the state of Texas. You guys do a great job. But let's face it, you're not right all the time. So... Being a weatherman in Texas is one way to be a, a, a failure and make lots of money. The other is batting fourth for the Houston Astros. I used to say, yeah, I know. I used to say it was batting fourth for the Texas Rangers because it was funnier. But now it's really funny when you say the Houston Astros. So, <laughs> I like our neighbors to the south. They're good people. 
just wish they would win some. I think because I think the rivalry would be a lot more fun to see the, the Rangers and the Astros going after it for first place instead of the A's. I'm getting tired of the A's. Though, I think it was a week or so ago, or, yeah, it was last Saturday, not this past Saturday, the Saturday before last, they had throwback uh, jerseys between the uh, Angels and the uh, and the A's. And they played in, uh, and they were playing in in uh, Oakland. In the A's uniforms were those from, I mean, the, 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 th- the throwback was 1969. It was fun. I mean, the same uniforms as Sal Bando and, and Raleigh Fingers and Joe Rudy and Reggie Jackson. That, that was fun. That was great to watch. And then you had the Angels of 69. Now, you have to remember, 1969, when the Angels were playing, Nolan Ryan hadn't shown up yet because Nolan Ryan in 1969 was playing for the Miracle Mets. He was coming out of the bullpen for for the uh, New York Mets. And they uh, he hadn't gotten traded to the Angels yet. Hadn't gotten that first no-hitter yet. So, 69. It was the summer of 69. Great song by, uh, by Brian Adams. It was the summer of 69. Um, I know, Dave, don't, never do that again. Uh, there's, and we're going to talk about this a little bit later. There's a list out. I want to say it's on Yahoo. There's a list out for, because of all this surrounding A-Rod. The 10, this is their list, by the way, not mine. Though I have to agree with some of the names on the list. There's a list out that is declaring the best athletes. Not baseball. Athletes. That means football, basketball, baseball, hockey, all of it. From New York. And they list ten names. And I, like I said, I agree with probably the majority of the list. We'll see what you think. If you agree with all that. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. I'm thinking, I'm thinking of some names that might have been left off that list. I got a peek of that list, and I think uh, I'm pretty satisfied with it. But I think there's a name or two that's not on that list. But eh, we'll see what you think. And if you want to chime in about that list, you can do so. We'll let you. I'll tell you how to do that. That and a whole lot more. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about the Dallas Cowboys. They had a preseason game uh, this past Saturday night. It was the Hall of Fame game. Larry Allen, great offensive guard for the Dallas Cowboys, went into the hallowed halls of, of Canton, Ohio, along with Bill Parcells, former coach of not just the Dallas Cowboys. I mean, he was the New York Giants, the Jets, the Patriots, the Cowboys. He's with the Miami Dolphins. And rightfully so, the Tuna goes into the Hall of Fame, but so did Larry Allen. Uh, we talked to Mike Keslick last week, and he played with Larry Allen, and he said that Larry Allen made him look a lot better than he might have had he not played alongside Larry Allen. All that coming your way right after this along the North Texas Sports Network. The Dave Michael Sports Show continues. Lone Star. Those two words mean so much to Texans. It's a way of life. It's pride. It means quality. Lone Star State Cigars. They understand all that those words mean. You can buy one of their four locations. Two in Allen, one in Plato, and one up in Richardson. See what pride and quality and way of life means. Lone Star State Cigars. You can find them on the web as well at LoneStarStateCigars.com. Way of life, the pride and the quality all under one banner. The Lone Star. Lone Star State Cigars. Once you come in, you'll understand, partner. Spring is in the air, and with that comes the age-old tradition of having the backyard barbecues. When you invite friends over, enjoy the ease and the convenience of serving those friends on items from the Pampered Chef. The catalog is chock full of great outdoor serving items that are built to be used by the grill or by the pool. How about when you have to go to others' houses? It would be nice to be able to transport those delicious dishes with ease. The Pampered Chef. 
Give Shelly and Danny Wiley a call and let them help you put together your very own Pampered Chef party. Call them at 214-808-7402. Find them on the web as well at pamperedchef.biz forward slash Shelly Can Cook. That's Shelly, S-H-E-L-L-E-Y, Can Cook. And see how easy it is to be a part of something fun and useful. There's also a way to help with your school or your charity event as well. Give Shelly a call, 214-808-7402, and start finding the chef in you. The Pampered Chef. The 78th annual AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic is just 12 months away. Be sure to get your tickets to this American Classic by going to the website of the AT&T Cotton Bowl, www.attcottonbowl.com, and reserve your seats for next year's game. What a great gift idea for the sports fan in your family. Enjoy the atmosphere of college football in one of the premier stadiums in the country, Cowboys Stadium in Arlington. The 78th AT&T Cotton Bowl Classic next January of 2014. Don't miss it. Remember when you were in high school? The after-the-game parties, the dances that were held in the school gym? Well, those days are long gone, just like Saddle Oxfords and Bobby Socks, but the partying... Well, that continues. A reminder that it is still against the law to drink while underage. There's a reason why lawmakers put the legal age to drink at 21. It's to protect you from yourself. It's hard enough that adults drink and drive. Why put yourself in danger? Don't drink and drive. It could save a life. Yours. A message from the Ad Council and Dave Radio Productions. Back here on the Dave Michael Sports Show for a Tuesday. You know, while, while you're listening to this on the air, we're doing a video of this, so you can see it on YouTube a little bit later. We get a little silly during the breaks. We hold up signs and make funny faces and what have you, so you can see that on the on the YouTube. But uh, if you're listening to us right now, we appreciate that. And uh, it, it goes without saying that without you, there is no us, and we appreciate everything that you guys do for us by listening. Uh, before the break. Before the break, we talked about the Dallas Cowboys Hall of Fame game that was played on um, on uh, Saturday night at uh, I'm sorry, it was played Sunday. The Hall of Fame induction was Saturday. It was the game was played Sunday night. I'm a day off and a day late. And uh, and the Cowboys, uh, first of all, they didn't play any of the what I call the stars. And to an extent, I kind of I don't disagree with that. I I mean I know a lot of Cowboy fans, they they kind of sit back and they say, well, you know, we we're fans. We want to watch Tony Romo. We want to watch Des Bryant. We want to watch all these guys do their thing. And I'm not disagreeing with any of that. I I appreciate your 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 sense of wanting to see that. But my thing is, you got five preseason games. What's the rush? This is an audition. This is for all these guys who think they're going to make this ball club. It's also for those guys who are drafted who should make this ball club and be an impact. I like Fredrickson, by the way, the the young man they got out of Wisconsin. He's the center. 170-something yards rushing on offense. Really? Seriously? Where the hell's that been? And this is not even the front line. This is not even the first guys. This is not even the guys that you expect to see on that front line when day one, when the opening game comes around. This is a preseason game, but it was still impressive to watch. Um, I think the Cowboys. I mean, the Cowboys won by the way, twenty four twenty, but they were they were up to seventeen to three at halftime. So the defense did their job. Uh, they took a pick. By the way, they got an interception. They ran it back, I think, 70-plus yards for the touchdown. And uh, But I'm still, my concern with the Dallas Cowboys right here, right now, I, you know, someone asked me my preseason prediction, what I think the Cowboys are going to do this year. And I said, maybe 8-8. Eight and eight. I'm still going to say that. I'm, I'm, I, I, I still think this team is not any better than last year. I think they're an 8-18. Eight eight 
I, they haven't proven anything to me yet, and that prediction, and that, I've written that down, by the way, so that's my prediction, 8-8. Eight and eight. I'm, I'm, I'm steadfast to that. If the Cowboys prove me wrong, thank you, I, I always like it when they do. I'm not trying to be funny. I just, it's important that you understand that my integrity that I enjoy is that I, I'll live up to whatever mistake I made. And if the mistake is the Cowboys are better than 8 and 8, the Cowboys make it to the playoffs, the Cowboys win a game in the playoffs, that hasn't happened in a while, um, then good. Good on them. And thank you for making me uh feel so bad what? okay hang on a second no 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 see brian mcgee a good buddy of mine uh he thinks they're gonna be nine and seven is that right is that what you're thinking you're thinking nine and seven <laughs> all right young brian mcgee i'll see your nine and seven and i'll raise you a cigar because he's a cigar rep. He can do this, and it's not going to cost him a dime. But <laughs> me, on the other hand, it might cost me something. <laughs> I'll bet you I'll, I'll put a cigar on that one for you, buddy. Brian McGee believes that the Cowboys are better than 9-7. and seven. You're on. I don't think so. 8-8. Eight and eight. <laughs> And he is agreeing. All right. There you go. See? This really does work. This really is interaction. He's listening, and we're having. The, and this is on Facebook, by the way. You can find us on Facebook. And uh, and Brian, you're always one of my best. I mean, I really do enjoy talking to you, and I enjoy being around you. And Brian's also a, a fellow Devilog, so simplify, my buddy. And um, and uh, man, I, and, and and here's another shout out for you, Brian. If you're ever around, come to the shop, say hi, wave. It's always good to see you. But in any case, um, so we got a little bet. Brian McGee, oh, I might as well plug it. He's with Toronto Cigars, and uh, he's a rep with uh, Toronto. And uh, so and he's one of the best guys, one of the good guys. And uh, so we got a little, we have a little side bet going here. I like that. It's a little interaction. It's perfect. Love it. So we'll have some fun with that. Wait till you see the video of this, Brian. You'll really get a kick out of it. <laughs> But in case, um, by the way, tell your folks I just gave you a big fat plug. <laughs> the Cowboys, in in general, they still have to prove to me that they can put together a balanced offensive attack, and the, and the balance means you got to you got to have the run along with the pass. We know that Roman can throw the ball. We know he's got some guys out there that can catch the ball. Jason Witten, and Des Bryant. And you know, Miles Austin, all those guys, they can catch the ball. But somewhere along the line, they're playing from behind, and so if you and I both know they got to throw the ball, guess who else knows they got to throw the ball? Yeah, that's right, the defense. So, um, and, and it's, I think, the one thing I was impressed with, okay, there was there was a couple of things that impressed the heck out of me, and and aside from the defense that I thought did a very good job with a bunch of guys that are trying to make this team, I didn't see a delay of game penalty. They got the plays in, they got them in timely, they got to the line, and they snapped the ball, and they were off. Last year, the one thing I noticed, and maybe some of you noticed the same thing, there is, when when the play came in last year, into the huddle, and then Tony Romo gets to the line, and he's checking off the line, and he's and he's killing the play, and he's making the the the, the alternatives and their and the audibles and all of that. By the time he gets under center or gets into position, it's now five seconds on the clock. Well, guess who else is watching the clock, boys and girls? That's right, the defense. And after that, when they see the clock hits two, and you got to center the ball by one. The ears are pinned back, and they're coming after you. And that's what happened. You want to know why the Cowboys lost the game to Washington? That's the reason. The defense is knowing the same the same snap count as the offense. Because there's no secret. You've got to snap the ball before the clock strikes zero. So if you're snapping the ball between two, to, two and one, what's going to happen? Those guys are going to pin their ears back and come after you. 
I'm I'm hoping that this season, with the plays on the wrist, and the offensive coordinator, Callahan, calls the play, Garrett approves the play, I guess. I mean, I talked about that. But once they get the play in the huddle, break the huddle, get to the line, snap the ball, and keep the, the defense off balance. And the one other thing I noticed about Roma last year and the year before, and several years before that, is that he would sometimes get to the line and overthink the play. That's dangerous. Take the play, look at the look at your assignment, and go. Run the game. I I think we're going to see a little better offense. We're going to see some wrinkles. Brian, I still think they're only going to be 8-8. Eight and eight. Just saying, man. I think the NFC East is a tough division to begin with. I mean, think I think the Redskins are still loaded for Bear, and I think that the, the Philadelphia Eagles are going to play spoiler, and the New York Giants, I think that's going to be your wild card coming out of the East. So how, how am I picking the East? I'm picking Washington, New York, Dallas, Philly. The only reason I'm picking Philly last is because, man, that is a team that is just, I, you know, they don't know if they're coming or going. I think the Eagles to the NFL is what the, what, what the Yankees are to Major League Baseball. They have all this controversy. Well, okay, put the Patriots in there because of the, uh, the, uh, Aaron Hernandez situation with, with his murder case and all. But nonetheless, I mean, there's some, there's a lot of crap going around. In sports, and I always tell you know, and, and this is okay. This will lead into this. I always tell guys that when when they want to get into sports broadcasting or something, that you got to wear basically three hats. Because first of all, first and foremost, we know that sports is what entertainment. We know that. Secondly, it's a business, and it truly is. We're, we're well. Case in point: Dallas Cowboys just sold the naming rights to the stadium, and that is now AT and T. Stadium. We can't call it Cowboys Stadium anymore. It's now AT and T Stadium. There's a little thing going on, hoping the name, the field, Tom Landry Field at AT and T Stadium. I kind of like that. It's got a nice ring to it. But nonetheless, it's a business. And third and foremost, it's news. It's a news thing, and the news is what causes the problems that we see in sports today. Because, well. I've got a guy who apparently, allegedly, reportedly, can't use, you can't use, he's done it, he hasn't gone to trial yet, committed murder. And not once, but twice, I've been told. Then you've got uh, crazy, um, <laughs> thank you, Ronnie. Ronnie Moore checking in with us. You've got... Uh, the the kid in uh, in 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 Philadelphia who used a racial slur at a concert, and how he's being told that you got to go through counseling now, you got to learn about this. Then you've got, well, you know, Pac Man Jones is Pac Man Jones, but uh, I have yet figured out what in the world. I mean, I do know what's going on, and I know how this works. You got a bunch of guys that have a bunch of money; they can't really spend it during the year. Because they're working. I say during the year. I'm talking about from literally July until February. These guys are working. That's a lot of months. But between February and July, there's time off. And you have guys standing around with lots of money in their pockets and lots of time on their hands. And lo and behold, the next thing you've got is trouble. Because why? It's kind of obvious. They don't know. They don't have any better things to do. The smart ones do. The smart ones they take vacation. They go away. Some are grounded because they have women in their lives. Of course, we also know that problem too. And and, and I shouldn't leave out the Dallas Cowboys in that news thing because of Josh Brent. But I think Josh Brent took the high road and did the right thing, and he retired. Now, granted, he's 25 years of age, but I still say he did the right thing. He retired. Um. I, uh, really? Okay. I'll give you a call, Ronnie. Ronnie Moore just sent me a message. 
Uh, he's with an ESPN radio station out of, uh, I want to say Cleburne. I guess that's right. And uh, it's the ESPN 1460 in Cleburne. And uh, Ronnie also does some high school stuff. Ronnie Moore. Ronnie and I used to work together doing traffic reports. Along with a couple of other people. <laughs> but yeah, I'll give you a call here in a bit. Thank you, Ronnie. Uh, I love this interaction. This is great. Little chat on the on the Facebook line. I like that. Works for me. In any case, you know I gotta look at the clock. I got you know I keep I keep getting this thing slipping away from me. Uh, stick around. We got a lot more coming your way here on the Dave Michael Sports Show. We're gonna talk a little bit more about. Here's another newsmaker for you, boys and girls. What's going on down in College Station? What in the world is going on in the mind? of a Heisman Trophy winner. All that coming your way right here along the North Texas Sports Network and the Dave Michael Sports Show. Casa Translation House. Home. A new casa. A new home for Mexican food right along the service road of the President George Bush Turnpike and Jupiter Road. Casa Cha Cha. All your favorites are there along with Pollo a la Parilla, which is their grilled chicken with three different sauces to choose from. Their fajitas are tender and juicy. Their enchiladas are just how Mama used to make them. Stop by and say hello to Ruben and Rosa. They will welcome you into their casa and make you feel right at home. Casa Cha Cha 190 in Jupiter on the eastbound service road. Next store to Renegade Cigars. Hi, this is Dave Mike. And this is Doc Morfield. Join us for Richardson ISD Sports. We cover all four high schools in the RISD. Catch football, basketball with the Burton Rams, the Lake Highland Wildcats, the Richardson Eagles, and the Pierce Mustangs. We have it all for you right here on Dave Radio Productions. All you have to do is log on to DAVRadioProductions.com and click to listen to any game live or archive. So come on, what are you waiting for? If you missed the game, that's all right. You can go back and listen to any broadcast all year long on DAVRadioProductions.com. The one place to hear it all. Dave Radio Productions, our business is to drive business to your business. Football fans, now you have something to wear that shows off your team spirit. It's not a shirt. It's not your average hat. This is a spirit hat. It's shaped like a star, but it also doubles as a beverage and food tray. The spirit star hat is unique that not everyone has one, at least not yet. But they are available online at spiritstarhat.com. That's spiritstarhat.com. Order yours today so you can have it by game day. And a portion of every purchase is being donated to the Gridiron Heroes Foundation. So wear something cool. Help those that forge this great game of football and cheer on your favorite team, the Spirit Star Hat. Autumn. The sound of that word conjures up images of leaves changing colors, crisp chill of the evenings, pumpkins, and pigskin. Yep, it's football season once again. And what better way to tailgate than with cooking items from the Pampered Chef? The ease in which you can order and the quality of the products are almost too good to be true. And since it is that time of season when high schools and boosters are looking for ways to raise money, check out Pampered Chef's charity and fundraising. It's much more than just selling wrapping paper or popcorn. Pampered Chef delivers quality products that are used day in and day out for your home. Call Shelly Wiley at 214-808-7402 for more information. Or email her at ShellyCanCook at Yahoo.com. Let's bring out the chef in you, the Pampered Chef. Hey, Rocky, you got to listen to Dave Michaels on the Dave Michaels Sports Show. It's better than fan meal from some founder. Right back here on the Dave Michael Sports Show and uh, having a good time. We got a couple of guys uh, chimed in, listening in, and we appreciate them doing so. Uh, Ronnie Moore, uh, again with the ESPN station out in Cleburne. Uh, 1460 catch him on the afternoon with a, with another old friend of mine. He said I made him sound old, so I'm, I'm going to use that term again. <laughs> yeah, Ronnie, when you start turning gray, let me know, okay? He's working with a, uh, an old friend of mine, Michael Golnick, who uh, used to do Ranger pregame and postgame shows uh, back in the day, as well as uh, Chad Dixon. So uh, make sure you, you tune in and log in and listen to their sports show uh, if you're in the uh, Dallas-Fort Worth area on 1460. 
Um, in fact, I saw them out at the uh, Big 12. Speaking of Big 12, well, really not. We weren't talking about the Big 12. We're talking about the Southeastern Conference. Talking about one, I you know, and I haven't quite figured this dude out yet. We're talking about Johnny Manziel. Johnny Manziel, the Heisman Trophy winner from from 2012. Uh, <laughs> hang on a second. Let me finish this conversation real quick. Uh, not gray enough, buddy, and my hair is a lot thinner than yours. Just talking to Ronnie Moore here. You got a long way to go to catch up with me, son. Any case, you're still better looking than I am, Ronnie. But anyway, Johnny Manziel down in, in a College Station, the Heisman Trophy winner as a freshman, and we have to explain a couple of things. First of all, he's the first and only underclassman to have ever won the Heisman Trophy. Uh, and since that winning of the Heisman Trophy, let's kind of thumbnail what has been going on in his life. He wins the Heisman Trophy. He shows up at a Maverick basketball game sitting front row. whoop de doo He goes to Winstar and gambles. Last time I checked, as long as you're not drinking, I think you can gamble at the age of 18 in Oklahoma. Sorry. Don't think that's really a problem. Uh, his dad buys him a bottle of champagne to celebrate the fact that he won the Heisman Trophy. Um, I think that was in New York. So far, so not so good, but not so bad. I mean, it's not horrible. He is spotted recently, recently, he is spotted in Austin, Texas at a frat party. He gets tossed. He's an Aggie. He's at the University of Texas in Austin. Those of you not aware of the rivalry between Texas A&M and Texas, go look it up. It's not pretty. Longhorns and Aggies have never liked each other. I'm not going to say that we don't respect each other. But rivalry is a rivalry. And then, and then, there was the, um, and before he got tossed from the frat, he was in Louisiana at the uh, Archie Manning uh, football camp. And he leaves. There are some reports that say he was asked to leave. And there's some people that said, Dad, he left because he was sick. Some people say he was dehydrated. Some people say that he was dehydrated because he had been drinking. Let me first of all explain to you that he is 20 years of age. There are drinking laws. Maybe not in Louisiana. I think in Louisiana, I think if you're tall enough to reach the top of the bar, you're old enough to drink. I'm kidding. But nonetheless, in Texas, we know the drinking age is 21. He's the Heisman Trophy winner. In years before, the Heisman Trophy was awarded to upperclassmen, juniors, seniors. And those guys have gone on to play for the National Football League. And in doing that, they pretty much put themselves in a position where they understand that they have this image. I mean, Reggie Bush had his taken away because of all the violations he did with the NCAA. I'm getting to what's going on with Johnny Manziel. Because Johnny Manziel has got some violations hanging over his head. Of which is he charged for autographs, to sign autographs, I should say. In January, after he beat Oklahoma in, in the uh, AT&T Cotton Bowl last year, or this past January, I should say. He gets on an airplane and goes to Miami to watch the, uh, the, the national championship game between Alabama and Notre Dame. The number one fighting Irish taking on the number two Crimson Tide in the BCS national championship game in Miami. Johnny Manziel gets off an airplane. Allegedly, he is approached by some gentleman. Allegedly, they go to a hotel room. Allegedly, he signs over 200 pieces of, of memorabilia, be it photographs, mini helmets, jerseys, whatever the case may be. But he's signing all of this. And I have read the reports that say, and they were reported to ESPN's Outside the Lines, and they say that he charged a five-figure amount 
they never really gave the amount. They just said it was five figures. So if I had a guess between ten thousand and twenty five thousand dollars to sign all of this, and I looked up on eBay, and those items are on eBay. I have seen those. According to the NCAA, Johnny Manziel violated the NCAA rules. What could happen to Johnny Manziel? Well, according to some sources, and my sources are pretty good, they're real good, he could be suspended for the entire year. He could show he could be ineligible for the entire 2013 football season for the Texas A&M Aggies. Or, he could be given a slap on the wrist and only be suspended five games. Which means, by the way, he would miss the third game of the season, which would be against the Crimson Tide of Alabama in College Station. Just saying. So, the point I'm trying to make here is, they say he's a kid. They say that he's being a kid. And I'm thinking to myself, no, no. You're being stupid. This Heisman Trophy thing, it has a bit of prestige to it, yes, but more importantly than that, it is it is the football, the college football world that saying you're the best athlete. And with being not just God-gifted talent to be an athlete, it also has to have the and I use the word again, integrity, to go along with it. There's a lot to uphold with being the Heisman Trophy winner. I mean, I'm not asking you to beat Roger Staubach. I mean, I, I would never do that. Roger Staubach's an individual that there's only one Roger Staubach. But if you had to put yourself in and in, in saying, how's a Heisman Trophy winner supposed to act? That would be it. Bo Jackson. Didn't read anything about him off-field problems. Hell of an athlete in two sports. There's others that you just never heard from. Charlie Ward, he, he played basketball. He won the Heisman Trophy at Florida State, and then um, he, he became a, a basketball player. Then there was... Um, oh, here's one for you. What about... Jim Plunkett wins the Heisman out of Stanford. Plays a few years of football for the New England Patriots. Back in the day, they were called the Boston Patriots. Then he goes and plays for the Oakland Raiders. Wins a Super Bowl over the Philadelphia Eagles. And he's not in the Hall of Fame. Wonder why. Hmm. Things that make you go, hmm. There's the... um, there's Pat Sullivan that came out of Auburn. Who was a coach here in, in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. He coached TCU for a while. But he never did anything in the NFL. Um, there's a couple of guys that have been bust that have won the Heisman Trophy. But, I mean, we're just talking talent-wise. Archie Griffin's the only two-time Heisman Trophy winner. When he came out of Ohio State, I have a problem. I do not call it the Ohio State. Sorry. Um, but he, he wins it two years in a row. And I believe he played in Ohio, but he didn't do much. I mean, he was not that big of an impact player. I mean, yeah, he had a, a year or two that was pretty good, but, I mean, not like O.J. Simpson. Here's another guy. By the way, interesting. Reggie Bush has his Heisman Trophy taken away, but they have not taken away O.J. Simpson's. Is it because... Oh, he won it so long ago, nobody really cares. Maybe. I don't know. Someone asked, could Johnny Manziel lose the Heisman Trophy? Lose it meaning, could they take it away from him for these violations? I wouldn't think so. I don't think it's that heinous of a violation. I had this discussion yesterday with with a gentleman at a uh, cigar shop. Those of you that don't know, I work in a cigar shop when I'm not doing this. And we can fix the world 
the majority of the time in a cigar shop, if you think about it. But we were talking about it. He played college ball, played offensive line. And we were talking about how to fix the problems that we're starting to see with college football. And here's, here's my take on this. If you're a college, we know the, we know the engine that drives the train is football. We know that. But by the same breath, we also know that the, um, the players are now in a different, in a different situation than they were 30, 40 years ago, 50 years ago. You know, you you wore the, the you, you bought the sweatshirts, the t-shirts, the ball caps, and what have you, and you rooted for your team, and that was great. Now, however, the jerseys of the guys that are on the field are being sold in the bookstores, and the colleges are making money on that. They're licensed by vendors, be it Nike or Reebok or whoever, to have your school emblem, school logo, school colors, whatever. And the people that are making the money on that are the schools. Not so much. The, and, and, and the individual that who, who's that number, I mean, I'm, Cam Newton. I know, I remember when Cam Newton played for Auburn. You saw the number two jersey everywhere. Same with A&M. You're seeing the number two jersey going everywhere for Johnny Manziel. When Vince Young played for the University of Texas, it was that number 10. And Colt was number 12. And you saw their jerseys being sold right and left at bookstores and, 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 and at concession stands and everything else. And the guys don't make a dime. The guys don't make a dime. And I know the argument is, well, they're getting a scholarship and they, you know, their school's being paid for. Yeah, okay, that's great. But you know what? They don't have any money to go on a date. Sorry. That's a fact of life. If you're a student athlete, you don't have any money. You want to go get a pizza? You gotta, I'm serious. You gotta pull your money together with your roommates. So here's my suggestion. Doesn't mean it's right. It's just a suggestion. Why doesn't the NCAA, and let's, let's just throw a number out there. Let's, let's just throw a, a, a dollar amount out there just to make it simple. This is probably not even close to what this actually is generating. But let's just play for an instance game here. Let's say that the student athlete, uh, his jersey, $500,000 a year. And it's a simple number. I know it probably makes more than that. But we'll, we'll just use that number just because it's simple. So a half a million dollars that that student athlete's jersey is generating money for the college. And we know the college is making money. In fact, we know the college is making so much money that at the University of Texas, the athletic department, the football department specifically, had to loan the university $12 million this past couple of years because the state stopped giving money to the tech, University of Texas, a state instituted, uh, uh, institution. It's down the block from the Capitol, as a matter of fact. So the football department said, okay, here's twelve mil. You can pay us back when you can. But here's a student athlete that makes... We'll say half a million dollars, just to throw a number out there. If, 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 let's say the college divvied up that $500,000 to every member of that football team and socked it away in a, in a stipend or a per diem, and you're given in a separate bank account with a separate credit card or whatever you want to call it and you're given X amount of dollars from that $500,000 now you can go buy pizza you can put gas in your car you can go on a date you see my point because these kids can't go out and earn a living because it's a violation of the NCAA rule here's a here's a prime example when I was in uh, Lufkin Texas I was in uh, doing basketball for Angelina County Angelina uh, Junior College Known as the Roadrunners. And there was a young man that was playing basketball. They didn't have a football team there. They had a basketball team there and baseball team. But there was a young man playing basketball. He was a point guard. And I kind of took a liking to him. And he, he was a, a, a young man that was thinking about getting into broadcasting. So we talked about that quite a bit uh, after practice or whatever. Practice was over right around, oh, 1230, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm standing around. It's lunchtime. I know he's a student athlete. So what? So I go over to him. His coach is not that far from us. I mean, he's, he's, he's a few yards from us on the basketball court. 
and I and I said, hey, listen, um, practice is over. Why don't you go grab a quick shower and let's go grab a bite to eat? I'll, I'll I'll buy you lunch. No sooner did I say buy you lunch that I get this claw on my neck where the coach says, no, you can't. And I said, say what? He says, you can't buy him lunch. It's a violation of the NCAA rule. It's a gift. You can't do that. So it's not a gift. It's food. It's nourishment. He has to eat. And then he says he eats in the commissary here on campus. Okay. You win. I can't buy you lunch. So that's my point. With the NCAA rules the way they are, these kids can't go out and earn They They can't get a job. Because, God forbid, they go work for, say, a car dealership to sell cars. This happened to um, uh, Bradford. Uh, uh, shoot, I can't think of his first name. Played at the University of Oklahoma. And later went down to, I think, Sam Houston State. Out of Grand Prairie, Texas. Big, you know, big stud. Going to be the next coming at, at Oklahoma. And at, while at OU, he went to work for a guy selling cars. Actually, he didn't even sell cars. I think he just had a job at... I think they were paying him 20 bucks an hour or something ridiculous like that um, to sit around. But unbeknownst to Bradford, this guy was a major booster for Oklahoma. So he gets busted. He leaves Oklahoma, and again, he goes down to, to Sam Houston State University and plays for the Bearcats. But he was supposed to be the next coming. He's supposed to be this great stud coming out of uh, out of high school. So the the process here is... Either the NCAA has got to get out of the archaic rule system of how these kids earn a living. I mean, yes, I'm a little... No, I'm not. The guy approached Johnny Manziel and said, come sign some autographs. And Johnny Manziel says, I don't sign for free. That's probably how it all went down. That probably is how it all happened. And he says, fine, I'll pay you X amount of dollars because I'm going to make the X amount of dollars off this when I sell it on eBay. I mean, why do you think athletes, professional athletes, charge for their autographs now? Because they know good, damn good and well that whatever they're signing is going to wind up in some eBay uh, auction or at a sports memorabilia shop or something, and the guy's going to make a living off of them. So the athlete's thinking, well, I'm, I'm going to charge the same thing. You know, I have, I have many autographs. I get them as in lieu of payment, paying for my time. Uh, one of one of my prized possessions. I've got a couple of them. I have a prized possession of, of a Mickey Mantle baseball that's signed to me specifically. And that's not here there. But I have a football that uh, I did some work for the Texas Shootout, which was a charity event hosted by Tony Hill. And Tony Hill, this is back in the early, early, early 90s. This is when the Dallas Cowboys uh, had won Super Bowl 27, their first Super Bowl since Super Bowl 12, that they had won a Super Bowl. And so Tony Hill, the former Dallas Cowboy wide receiver, put together a charity event. It involved a, uh, a football camp for kids and then a charity basketball game and a golf tournament and a, uh, an evening uh, with a special musical artist. And one year it was, I think, Michael McDonald out at the Meyerson. It was a wonderful black tie affair. It was great. In any, in any case, he asked me to be the public address announcer for the basketball game that was held at uh, Lowe's Stadium, Lowe's Fieldhouse in North Dallas. And he says, I, I, he says, I really can't pay you much. And I said, tell you what, here's a football, get it signed, and that'll be my payment. He said, done. That, that, I can do that. So on this football, there, I mean, such names, such names. Troy Aikman, Mark Tuane, Mark Stepnoski, Daryl Johnson, um, Roger Staubach, Drew Pearson, Ed Tutal Jones. Uh, Tony Dorsett. This is all on one football. Um, I even have Haven Moses' name on this. Former Denver Bronco great. Timmy Brown. I have like three Heisman Trophy winners on this one football. I've got Mel Renfro, Bob Lilly. There's like five or six Hall of Famers on this football. Um, a couple of Super Bowl MVPs are on this football. So, I mean... Guys are thinking, well, that, that's worth a lot of money. No, it's not. It's not worth a dime. There's two names on this that make it totally, totally worthless. The name is Monica and Mary Kay. That's it. 
Those two names just ruined the football. Did I do it on purpose? Absolutely I did. Why? Because that football is more important to me than it is sitting in some memorabilia shop. So my point to you people is, you know, if, if Johnny Manziel signed a bunch of stuff and it's being sold on eBay, and to an extent I can understand while he's saying, well, you're making profit on this and it's you're asking me for my time and writer's cramp for signing all this uh, memorabilia, I get a little something out of this. And you know, I, I five figures for what he's getting, I can't really argue with it. Wish I could. But he still violated the rule. And the rule is the rule. And it's no different than what's going on in Major League Baseball right now with the rule, uh, with the, the performance enhancing drug rules. So, technically, you broke the rule. Technically, you're going to get your hand slapped. Technically, if you lose the entire season because of your stupidity, that's on you, my friend. And here's something else. Would it have really been terrible if you told the guy that wanted you to sign all this to write the check out to your dad and have your dad deposit the check in a foundation, in a charity that might have been named after you? I have to check to see if that's actually a violation of NCAA rules. Can a student athlete actually have a foundation, a charity foundation? I know professional athletes do it because they do it for a tax shelter situation. I have to think about that. Hey, before time slips away from us, before everything kind of slides away from us, I want to remind everybody that on August the, uh, is it August 17th? Yes. August 17th, Saturday the 17th at the Dallas Convention Center, a reminder, XKO Promotions, Extreme Knockout, having their event going on at Europa 2013. They can still get you some tickets, and tickets are still available online. Go to Europa2013.com, and uh, you can log on and get tickets there. And a reminder that our, our good friend uh, Thomas Bussey and his fighters will be doing 10 bouts. Steven Peterson is uh, defending his title, the Bantamweight title, in the XKO event. And uh, bell time begins at 4 o'clock. So my recommendation is go and enjoy it. And I wanted to make sure that we get that plug in. We'll do it again next week as well. But uh, get your tickets for XKO and uh, their event going on at Europa 2013 on a Saturday afternoon at 4 o'clock. The bell will ring for that. Speaking of bells, circle your calendar September 21. Circle the calendar September 21. That's a Saturday night in Allen, Allen, Texas, just north of Plano. It is Guns and Hoses one more time, the boxing tournament. And we will be there along with Doc Morefield and myself as we will do the blow-by-blow uh, -blow description of Guns and Hoses, or as I like to call it, Legalized Assault and Battery. Because it's the fire versus the police. Fire, by the way, have won it two years in a row. Come on, Blue. you got to make me proud, man. you got to take the trophy back. But that will happen on the 21st of September. On the 26th of October, one month later, the Pigskin Classic 3, that's the full contact football game between the, uh, the fire and the police at FC Dallas Stadium in Frisco. And that will take place on, uh, on Saturday at 6 p.m. on the 26th of October. Full slate of activity. And beginning August the 30th, it's uh, the North Texas Sports Network proudly presents their 12th season of doing Richardson ISD football. Uh, Doc Morefield, Scott Robbins, myself, and our entire crew, Brian Pitts, Alicia, all in the house taking care of business. And uh, my prediction this year is the same as it was last year. Yes, boys and girls, I do believe that the Skyline Red Raiders will once again win the championship one more time. They will win the uh, the. Uh, 9-4-A, I'm sorry, 9-5-A uh, district championship and uh, falling right behind them will be Lake Highlands followed by possibly Jesuit and then it's a toss up between Richardson and Berkner and Pierce and I think it's going to be Richardson this year to get into the playoffs so there's my prediction, as someone asked me if I was going to do that, I said yes I would so there you have it. In the meanwhile, it's the fastest hour in radio. We've got to put it away. We've got to put this one in the history books. I want to thank everybody for chiming in. Brian McGee and my friend Ronnie Moore for doing so, and all of you that have been listening. 
We appreciate you doing so. Do it again next week, Tuesday morning at 10 a.m., right here on the North Texas Sports Network. For all of us, see you soon. Put it in the history books. So long. Thank <laughs> you.